It's a real honor to speak with you because you are a pop princess. You're an impossible princess. You're a pop queen. You're queen of all media. The latest part of your empire. Uh, I'm going to bed. I'll <laughs> take all that. Thank you. <laughs> you deserve all of it. And the latest part of your empire is now you're a wine queen. What made you want to get into the wine business? I like a glass of wine. Thinking back to how I got into it and I've been afforded some incredible opportunities in my life and in various places to be, you know, to have a, a lovely glass of wine in incredible circumstances with amazing people and how that forms memories and, and all of that. But you've done so many things and it's interesting because of how you came to the business, you know, through neighbors. Maybe you're not so much known here in America for that, but known as being an, at first a soap opera actress and of course yeah. with Stock Aiken Waterman and all that. I don't know if there was a time when you felt you weren't taken seriously, but eventually you're working with Manic Street Preachers and Nick Cave and Dua Lipa and years and years, you just have pretty much done it all. Is there a moment in your career where you feel like the tides kind of critically started to turn for you? It's kind of been a lifelong process, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Um, it might have only been all the way up from me in my head to really feel like I did that was Glastonbury in 2019 to be performing at the Legend slot. And all those little demons and insecurities that you have, which either come from within or from those other voices, because it very definitely was. In the early days, I was very successful, but hadn't earned my stripes and I was a very easy target. A one hit wonder or she doesn't deserve it or she's not good enough. All that stuff stays with you. Mm. Um, but, you know, it takes time to learn your craft. And I guess all of that adds up to now and something like performing at Cafe Carlisle last night in that intimate setting and really feeling like I've earned this. I worked hard for this. You physically hard, mentally hard, and um, and uh, you know, so it just makes me that much more grateful. I'm surprised that it took till 2019 for you to to feel that because I mean, I've seen you come out of a Venus oyster shell <laughs> at the Hollywood. Yeah, Bowl. There's, all the, there's definitely all those moments. <laughs> the late 80s, my first albums, and then to Fever in 2001. No one could deny like that was a kind of. Um, meteor of a moment for me so i think from there things started to settle and then of course um or just prior to that with nick cave that was like a being anointed <laughs> how did that come about because i mean it's such an iconic duet i do remember when it came out on murder ballads there was definitely an element of surprise i think on paper it would have made no sense <laughs> whatsoever i mean it certainly wouldn't have come from my imagination um but the story for me with that is um, back in the early 90s, I was dating a, a friend of Nick's, Michael Hutchins. And mm. I remember back then, Michael saying to me, Nick would love to do a song with you. I didn't know who Nick came and, you know, that was not my, I'm, I'm listening to, you know, Delight, and um, <laughs> I was not listening to Nick Cave in the Bad Seeds, so I just said, "Oh, that's nice," and I didn't really think anything more of it. And then, a handful of years later, when um, Nick and I were on the same record label at that time, and this came to be again. So when the request and when Nick reached me at that time, it was actually really important that I'd heard about it years before. So mid 90s, there was that postmodern irony and kind of Brit hop and it wasn't the, the pop pop time. And I was part of, you know, I was trying to go against that myself with Impossible Princess and experiment with different things. I knew when Nick asked me to sing Where the Wild Roses Grow that it, it was genuine. This wasn't a kind of an ironic thing. It was really mm. genuine. And the moment I met him, the day I met Nick was the day I did my vocals for Where the Wild Roses Grow. I couldn't love him anymore. He's, he's a hero of mine. And I could call it a bit of rebellion, but also just, you know, growing into myself. And I, I started out as, you know, when I was 19, I kind of say I wore primary colors in videos and my audience were, you know, from six to 10. I've had to grow as a person and you try and push those boundaries and Sometimes it works and sometimes you really shouldn't have done it, but it's all part of the process. And I, I am so fortunate that my fan base for the most part has grown with me. So we're all going through stuff. Mm -hmm. And now I'm mid fifties going through, well, so much, I'm 54. 
but you know it's a different stage of life and going through other things well it's interesting because you mentioned fever and you were relatively older for a pop star you were in your early 30s but you know a lot of you know women especially get told you know at age 25 they're already too old or whatever so mm -hmm. you know it must have felt really good to have the biggest global and u.s success of your career you know after you'd had a chance to grow into your skin a little bit i probably didn't really think about it at that point. Now it's become more of a subject that we talk about women, how we age in this industry. I kind of hate talking about it because I wish we didn't talk about it, but it's a thing. So that's what I tried to say in um, Golden. I tried to address that topic without being too overt about it. We're not young and we're not old, we're golden. Like I can't be older than I am. I can't be younger than I am. We can all just be who we are in this moment in time. And I guess the broader conversation in many walks of life is about acceptance. And hopefully that is something that we continue to get better at. Obviously you are um, a cancer survivor. Did, did going through that give you any insight? Like, did that make you more driven? Did that make you want to like dive even more into like your career given that you've been uh, through something like it, that? It was a million things and it's, it's deep and emotional. And I guess you find your strength and we all have compassion, but I guess compassion with experience leads to a different understanding mm. for, for oneself and also for for people's struggle, whether it's that or just, you know, when you have that first big struggle in your life, it does change your, your, um, your view and your experience. I was diagnosed in the kind of middle of a tour. My stage was being built in Sydney and I was in Melbourne. It was literally people all over that stage building it. And then we shared the news and made the announcement. So that was my goal to get back on stage and finish that tour. Do you remember the, the first night you got back? It was probably a bit like an out of body experience. I I had to do things a little differently. We built in an interval on the show for the first time. I just was really nervous about going out and doing any show at full speed. The second night Bono came and sung on stage with me. So that was a real boost, an absolute boost. Wow. Uh, yeah, I just had to stop myself from going to the, to, to the big cry. Mm. Obviously it was emotional, but it's like, put together. Same at Glastonbury, I did the same thing. I was very determined to get back on stage. I guess it reaffirmed that I love what I do. I'm about to go into the studio, into writing again in July. I can't wait to get in there. And I feel that, yeah, there's more to say. There's more of life's experiences to share. And I know I'm, 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 I'm driven, I'm curious. I feel like creativity breeds creativity. And even though I've already got more songs than I can fit in a show, I'm, I'm hungry for that next song. What's the next one? So getting into that puzzle again is gonna be really fun. And uh, you know, how to use my, my tools and how to express myself. It's, it's um, layered and interesting. And yeah, I feel like I do approach things very differently with a different uh, confidence, even more intrigue than I would have had back in the early days. I would never have imagined this life and this career coming from those early beginnings and daydreams. It was really an honor to speak with you. Thank you so Thank much, you, Anda. Lindsay. Cheers to you and your oh, yeah. highly wines. And you take care. I'll go you for too. it. <laughs>